Hey kids, welcome to some practice with this angular and linear velocity. So as I said in our live sessions, the bike problems have kind of everything thrown at you at once. Some of the earlier problems are a little bit um, more reasonable, <laughs> let's just say. So let's look at this one. If you have two gears with a radius of two, and a radius of five, right? So I have one small gear, one large gear. They are interlocked. Now I know the problems, right? When I was focusing on the bike, I said, Do you, are you dealing with your two cases, concentric or um, connected by a belt? Well, these ones don't have a belt around them, but can you see that they still are connected? Right. As one spins, the other it's creating the other one spinning because they're interlocked right here. Right. Do you see that scenario? So what case do I have? This is the belt case. So you can imagine, you know, if you really want to picture the belt going around here, this is the belt. And what's true about the belt situation? Who's the same linear or angular? Right? Right, linear velocity. So imagine a point going here, a point here, and maybe a point here. On the gears, as they spin, the linear velocity is the same. The angular velocity is not going to be the same because this poor guy, right, has to spin a lot faster as to keep up with this guy. So they're asking me for the linear velocity of the small gear. So velocity of the small gear is the radius times omega, whereas omega is in radians per time. But they gave me radians per time, didn't they? So I just have two, what, inches? Two inches times four radians per second. Eight inches per second. So what is the linear velocity of the big gear? Because you are connected by a belt, the linear velocities are the same. Okay. What is the angular velocity of the big gear? Angular velocity is different. So again, think about this guy's got to spin a lot, right? He's going to spin a lot faster than the big guy. So the angular velocity of the small one is four radians per second. So I expect a smaller number, right? The angular velocity of the big guy. So I'm going to take my formula, my linear velocity formula, which is the radius times omega, and I'm going to solve for omega. Linear velocity over the radius. So what is the linear velocity? of the big guy. Well, the linear velocity of the big guy is the same as the little one. So I have eight inches per second times one over the radius. And the radius of the big gear is five inches. Notice the inches cancel out. And I get eight over five. radians per second and eight fifths is certainly smaller than four. No funky unit conversions here. Okay. All right, let's do another one. 
an ice skater spins around. So again, picture that you're standing in the center of the room and you have friends on either side of you. Let's say you have two to three friends on either side of you and you start spinning around in a very tight circle. The friends that are further away from you have to go faster, right? They have to go faster to, to keep up with you. If you've got your um, arms linked together, right? So you're spinning in the center here. You're spinning in the center. You've got friends, right, linked with their arms together and you have one friend that's five feet away, right? And then there's another friend this, a distance of five units away, but then there's more friends, right? There's more that could be friends closer to you. There could be friends farther away, but this particular friend is five feet away. What is their angular velocity? Trick question. Doesn't matter how far they are away, right? For the angular velocity, right? They already told me what it is. If you spin at one revolution per second, this is the concentric circles, right? Because you're spinning here, your friend is spinning here, right? This is concentric circles. So, unlike the connected or the belt problems, the angular velocity of any of your friends is the same. Now remember angular velocity though has to be in radians per second. So they gave me one revolution per second. I do need to do my unit conversion here, right? It takes me two pi is the circumference of my unit circle is one revolution. Two pi radians per second. And then you know what? I noticed down here that they're asking me for the angular velocity of another friend that's over here at 15 feet but that's another concentric circle, isn't it? And what's true about the concentric circle? Um, hello. Right? Their linear velocities are different. Their linear velocities are different because you are spinning right here in this type, you're, you're actually the distance you're traveling. If I were to take your spin and spread it straight out, the length of distance that you travel isn't nearly as far as your friend over here, right? That person has to go right there. Arc length is very large compared to your arc length. So linear velocity of this friend, the five foot friend, And I already know from before what my omega is. And I was given the radius, right? Would you expect this linear velocity to be greater or less than the friend who is 15 feet away? Right, it's nice to kind of think about that going in. So second velocity is the new radius times the same angular velocity.
I forgot to put my feet here, and I forgot to put my feet here. There we go. All right. So two simple examples. And remember, we're going to spend a good portion of the next live session uh, working on uh, packet problems. Okay, along with the beginning of the right, the trig review uh, stuff from the second video. All right. Have a good one and I will see you in our next session.